let's go to the fifth string, fifth fret, that's D, and we're gonna do the major arpeggio. So it's gonna sound like this. Now you only need to learn three shapes today, and then we're gonna put them all together in a really cool way. Uh, so don't think like you have to learn a million things today. It's just three shapes, and then we're gonna glue them together. So that's gonna be the major shape that we do. You notice I got to the very top and I stopped. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pick and come back down. So it's this up and down motion with an accent on either end. So we start off picking a little harder than normal. <laughs> Now when we reverse it, we're going to do a downstroke, and we're going to pick that and accent that harder, then the rest of them go back to normal. Now if you're new to sweep picking, it might feel really weird to watch your pick just fall down the stairs like that and then climb back up, but that's what you have to do to get good at sweep picking. You'll also notice I'm lifting each finger as I play, that's so that nothing bleeds over the previous note. And then also I'm using my palm to follow my pick just behind it so that I deaden the previous string that was playing. It's a really great way to keep everything muted so your sweeps sound clean, which is very important for a lot of people. Uh, I love clean sweeps as well, uh, especially when you get into a lot of the shredding. All right, so let's move on to the minor shape now. So let's move our pinky up to the fifth string, seventh fret, that's E. We're gonna do E minor triad. Such a great shape. It is a little tricky though. You have to reach back and hit this G note here before you stretch up and hit the seventh fret. So it takes a little bit of uh, wide fingers. You might wanna do your finger stretches, your finger yoga, all that stuff is on the website. So anyway, that's gonna be the minor arpeggio using the first form, minor. Now we come back. The direction that I'm picking is very important. So watch one more time, really focus on the picking hand. Follow that pattern throughout the entire exercise. All right, now, like I said, there are only three shapes. Well, they're already gonna start to repeat now. This is the beauty of it. So we started with D major arpeggio. Then we went to E minor. Now we can go to F sharp minor and play the same thing we just did, except now we start on the ninth fret of the fifth string. So that would be F sharp minor arpeggio. Now let's go up to the 10th fret, which is G. And we're gonna do a major arpeggio shape like we did the, for the very first one. Good news, we get to do another major. Move it up to the 12th fret of the fifth string, A, and we're gonna do that major arpeggio again. So I'm starting to speed up a little bit just when, when demonstrating it, but you guys can take your time on all of these. So real quick review, we had D major, E minor, F sharp minor, G major, A major. We have a few left. Now let's reach all the way up to the 14th fret of the fifth string. This is going to be B minor triad arpeggio. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do the minor shape starting on B. If you're getting some bleed, enough notes are ringing out over each other, really slow down and try to separate those notes. Slow and smooth. All right, here's the tricky one, ready? We're gonna move up to the 16th fret, that's C sharp, and we're going to do a diminished triad. So this is gonna be a little bit strange because we're gonna go root note, minor third, flatted fifth. It's gonna be a different shape than what we're used to. This is gonna be the third shape we're talking about today. So let's go fifth string, 16th fret, then we're gonna go fourth string, 14th fret, third string, 12th fret. So it's kind of a big stretch. Sounds pretty evil, huh? So I like to use my pinky, middle finger, index finger. Then on the second string, 14th fret, I'm gonna use my ring finger. That seems kind of weird to some people. It's just a personal preference for me. Then we're gonna to go to the first string, 12th fret, index finger. And then we're gonna go first string, 15th fret, I use my pinky. So the whole thing will sound like this. All 
All right, good news. We're at the octave points. So let's go to the fifth string, 17th fret. We're back to D, just the octave now. So we go back to the major. It's just going to all be condensed together now because of the skinnier frets. We're going to do one thing different at the end. We're going to ascend, and then we're going to do a tap just to be fancy, okay? It's just kind of fun. We're going to reach our middle finger over, hit the first string, 22nd fret. That's octave D. So it sounds great. It goes like this. Kind of puts like the period at the end of everything. So I kind of love that. And then on the website, we're going to do the descending pattern. And we're going to actually start off by pulling off of that tap to bring us back home. And by the way, if you play just the beginning points of every single one of these arpeggios, you would get a D major scale. So keep that in mind. When you're playing in D major, you could just fly through this exercise and sound great. 